In this time series video, we're going to be taking a look at simple exponential smoothing. We'll be going over the background behind it as well as the smoothing parameter. And then I'll show you how to implement this in with Python with the help of a data set based around stock prices. So we have a ton of cover in this video. Let's go over the background behind SES. All right, so let's jump into simple exponential smoothing. So what exactly is simple exponential smoothing? Well, it is a time series forecasting method used to predict future values by assigning exponentially decreasing weights to past observations. Also, I do want to mention that sometimes you'll see this represented as single exponential smoothing or the acronym of SES. It's typically used for short term forecasting since it reacts quickly to changes in the data and it's suitable for data with no clear trend or seasonality, which causes the forecast to be flat. Also it uses a smoothing parameter, which is alpha to control the weight of recent observations and forecasts are computed as a weighted average of past values. Uh, we'll go into the formula, I think in the next slide or slide after, um, actually it's gonna be the slide after. So there's, three different types of exponential smoothing. You have simple or single, which is going to be in this video. Uh, the next video is going to cover double exponential smoothing. And then last, we're going to cover Holtz Winters exponential smoothing. So these will be all in a row in this playlist. I don't know for sure if this is the upload order of videos on the channel, but if you are following along with the playlist, this is how you'll learn about exponential smoothing. So let's take a look at this specific formula. So S of T is the smooth value at time T, X of T is actual observed value at T, and alpha is the smoothing perimeter. Now, alpha has to be a value between zero and one. A larger alpha equals more weight for the current observations. And if alpha is one, we have a naive forecast model. So I just wanted to show you really quick um, how you'd get these specific values. So I'm just using an alpha value of 0 0.2 and then 0 0.8 and just plug it into the formula, right? So our first term would be the 0 0.2 or 0 0.8, right? And then our next term, we take one minus alpha, multiply it by alpha. So you can see 0 0.2, then we get the 0 0.16. The 0 0.8 jumps all the way down to 0 0.16. Then we're gonna do one minus alpha squared times alpha. You get 0 0.128 as well as 0 0.032. And then lastly, one minus alpha to the third power times alpha and then you see 0 0.1024, and then for our 0 0.08, man, it, or our, sorry, and then for our 0 0.8, we get down to 0 0.0064, and uh, yeah, we're gonna get super, super tiny values. So how do you choose your alpha parameter? Well, a low alpha gives more weight to past values, making the forecast a little bit more stable, whereas a high alpha reacts quickly to recent changes, right? And we can go back over here and see 0 0.8, right? It has over here x of t, and then x of t minus one is 0 0.16, then it goes to 0 0.032, then 0 0.0064. Where's our alpha value, right? For it goes when it's 0 0.2, goes 0 0.2, 0 0.16, 0 0.128, and then 0 0.1024. And you can see, like after the second term, which they're tied, uh, 0 0.2 tends to have larger values, where 0 0.8 gets really small fast. Okay, and then selection of this typically is done through optimization techniques like. Uh, minimizing the mean squared error. How we can do this in Python, right? Kind of trial and error. You can test different values of alpha from zero to one and observe the results, or you can have an automatic selection. So letting in a stats model package automatically optimize alpha. Uh, we're gonna go through both of these approaches within our Python code. Uh, this is it for the slides. So make sure to grab a Python notebook and let's start going through an example of predicting Apple's stock price. All right, so let's get started. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna import in pandas. So import pandas as pd, then import numpy as np, then import numpy as np, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, then from stats models.tsa.api import simple X smoothing like that. Great. We have everything that we need for this video. And the first thing we're going to do is import in our data. The one I'm using today is data for Apple stock for over five years. It's from a larger Kaggle data set uh, from the S&P 500. I'll put a link down below in the description so that way you guys can use it. 
And Google Collab, I just dropped it in over here, all stocks, five-year CSV. And yeah, so what we're gonna say is df equals pd.readcsv, so read CSV. And then all you have to do is go back over here, copy this link, so copy path, go back over here, paste it like that, and you should be good to go. All right, so now after that, we're gonna filter to just Apple. So what we can say is Apple DF, like this, and we're gonna say equals DF. Is that over here, DF of name, so name. And we're gonna say that equals Apple, so A-A-P-L. And then also, I'm just gonna put that copy. We don't have any issues over there. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert the date column to date time and then sort by the date. So we'll say Apple DF date equals pd.2 date time apple df dates all right that's here and then we'll say apple df dot sort values should already be sorted but that's all right we'll say date in place equals true now what we're gonna do on this side of things is set the date as our index. So we'll say apple df dot set index, set index, and we'll grab over here, dates. We'll say in place equals true. That's all right. So set index, we sorted the values. So we changed the date time, right? We sorted the values, then we also set our index. And then what we're gonna do is go over here and we'll say apple df equals apple df that as frequency and then put v okay and then lastly what we're going to do is close over here so apple df close equals apple df Close, interpolate, okay. And what this does is make sure our data set works with weekdays, which would be uh, stock prices, right? And then this cleans up any of the missing NAN values that this would cause, right? So like you can think of like holidays and things like that. So, so we need both of these lines. And then, yeah, so what we're gonna do now is say apple close equals apple df close this and great. Now what I wanna do is plot our data of Apple stock prices. So I'll say plot and we'll go over here and say plt.figure, set fig size, so fig size equals We'll go 10.6, right? Uh, plt.figure, sorry, plt.plot, we'll plot apple close, full close, label equals apple closing price, apple closing price, color equals black, plt.title, apple, stock closing prices, right? PLT.x label, the date. Also, you don't need that star there. Just typo here. All right, PLTY label, Y label. Oh, man, I can't spell. Label, say price. PLT.legend. PLT.grid, true. And lastly, shows PLT.show. Assuming no typos, which I always have, right? Label like that. All right, and then you can see this graph of the data, right? From 2013 to 2018, Apple has gone up quite a bit, right? They're down below over 60 and almost got to 180 and then decreased a little bit uh, in early 2018. So 
with this data out of the way, let's take a look at some forecasting. And what I want to do first is go through a manual smoothing level. And then our second one, we'll do an automatic one. And then we'll plot the forecasts after. So let's start off on this side of things. We'll say example one, right? And the first thing we're going to do over here is say fit one equals simple exponential smoothing. Then we're going to pass in our apple close. And we're going to say dot fit, so dot fit. And then we're going to pass in our smoothing level. So smoothing level equals 0 0.2. And honestly, let me just enter this on a new line so it's easier for you guys to read. So say smoothing level equals 0 0.2. And say optimized equals false. All right. So that's our fit. And then what we're going to do too is set our forecast. So I'll say forecast over here of cast one. We're going to say this equal to fit one dot forecast. And what we can define is how out we want to forecast this. Now we're going to look at five years of data and obviously this only works pretty good in the short term. So I'm just going to put 30 over here. And if we need to expand it out just to take a look at it a little better, that's fine. And I'm going to rename this to so rename. Uh, we're going to use this a little bit later in the graph. I'm going to paste this over. The, what this allows us to do is print out our alpha value. Uh, so this is going to say alpha equals 0 0.2 in our final graph. And easier just me copy and paste that rather than uh, butchering it. So, okay, now what we're going to do is go into fit two. So I'll say fit two equals, and honestly, it's a lot of the same. So we can literally just grab this over here or simple exponential smoothing, right? Apple close dot fit. This time we're going to get rid of this smoothing level because what we're going to do is uh, do it automatically and then optimize false. We get rid of that as well. So it's literally just this line, right? Apple close dot fit. Okay, that's our fit too. And then what we're gonna do is set our second forecast, right? And again, it's very similar. So we'll just say forecast to fit two dot forecast. We'll do 30 still. And then I'm gonna just change this naming convention over here. So because we're not defining 0 0.2, we're getting our alpha value from the model parameters of our smoothing level. And yeah, so this will automatically change based off of the smoothing level that gets assigned since we did not define it in here, right? So that's gonna be our forecast two. So fit two, perfect. And then what we're gonna do now is plot both of these. So we'll look at one last plot and let's jump through this code. So what we'll say is plt.figure, we'll say fig size equals, I'm gonna use what, 10 and six a little bit earlier. So honestly, I could have just copied that, but that's all right. All right, so we have that over here. And we'll say plt.plot, right? Similar to earlier, apple close. Say over here, marker equals O, color equals black, marker size equals two, line style. Wow, look at the typo. Line style equals here, right, line width equals one. Then what we're gonna do is plot our fitted values. So we'll say plt.plot here, fit one dot fitted values, line style equals dash dash. Color equals blue, line width equals one. We'll copy this, the next line over here, and we'll just change everything to two. And also we'll change that color to red. All right, let's get our forecast lines over here. And what we'll do on that is we'll say line one. equals plt dot plot of cast one marker equals s color equals blue marker size equals four line style equals dash 
line width equals two. Label equals f cast one dot name. We're going to literally duplicate this again, right? And we'll change color to red. Forecast two dot name, right? And that's this over here. We renamed it. And then this is going to be line two this time. So we'll just change that over here and forecast two. All right. Change the color. All right, we're gonna go down another line. Sorry, this is a little tedious over here. Oh, we're also gonna highlight the forecasted area. So we'll say plt dot x vspan. So x vspan f cast one dot index zero. F cast one index negative one. Color equals gray, alpha equals 0 0.2, label equals forecast period. All right, and now we just need to add a legend in here. So plt.legend and location was upper left. Filty.title, SES, all right, filty.x label, dates, filty.y label, stock price, this is our grid, so filty.grid, true. Line style equals alpha equals 0 0.5. And then lastly, plt.show. Hopefully I don't have any typos in here. I'll have to look back at my source code. Not, of course I have an error. It was my error over here. Can't spell line width. So we'll be in both these. We run it. All right, and here are our forecasts, right? So we forecasted 30 days. Both of these are horizontal. Uh, as we get to more advanced forecasting methods, that's not always gonna be the case, right? Uh, if it was always horizontal like this, they're, they're not a ton of value. And that's why also when you use SES, it needs to be very short term. Obviously I did 30 days, so you guys can read it a little bit better on the graph, but I do not recommend using SES for a 30 day prediction. Regardless, right, you can see when you use alpha value of 0 0.2, it actually predicted a bit higher of a value. Um, the automatic alpha was 0 0.99, almost one, and uh, a lot lower of a value. I mean, looking at this, it's probably like, what, three or $4 difference between both of those? I can't 100% tell. I think this is a little bit under 160, actually, because the dotted line, this over here, probably about like 163. So yeah, I mean, probably about three or $4 difference between the two, which is a lot if you're investing into a stock, right? And that's really fast. But so yeah, we have our graph over here, the data trained on, and then our final values on this side of things. So to just kind of recap, right? Once you have your data ready to go, just simple exponential smoothing, you fit your data first, right? Then you set your forecast period, which I just did 30. Again, you can define your smoothing level if you want, right? If you leave it blank, it's automatically going to choose a specific smoothing level. Not too difficult for this video, but again, as we move on in the series, the difficulty will rise a bit. Thanks guys for checking out the simple exponential smoothing video. And if you found value from it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's a metric that YouTube uses to help grow channels and it's also free. And if you want to continue this time series playlist, I'm going to link a few videos down below in the description, or you can click right onto the screen right over here to jump into the playlist. I'm still developing it, so expect it to be grown over the next few months.